Neonatal Respiratory Disorders In this video, we will be covering three major topics hyaline membrane disease, transient tachypnea of newborn and meconium aspiration syndrome. Now let's begin. Let's start with HMD also known as hyaline membrane disease. It is called so because of the formation of hyaline membrane in and around the lung alveoli. This occurs due to the deficiency of surfactant. Now let's discuss the pathophysiology of this disease. As you can see here, there is a normal alveoli which is non-collapsed because of the presence of surfactant. What happens is that when we exhale, our lungs recoil. Therefore, there is a tendency to collapse. But as we know that gas exchange occurs in expiration also in the alveoli. Hence, a phenomena must be there to prevent collapsing. This prevention occurs due to a layer of surfactant. Now let's see what happens if this surfactant is less in number or deficient. As you can see now, when the neonate expires, the air out of the alveoli, the alveoli collapses. Hence, due to which air exchange in the alveoli is hampered. And, and this was just an overview in HMD, but actually lot more happens in the alveoli. Let us dig a little deeper and understand the exact reason of hyaline membrane formation. Important thing to note here is that not only the alveoli are being collapsed, but also their walls are damaged due to immature epithelium. This damaged alveolar epithelium causes accumulation of exudates from blood leading to fibrosis like condition which later gets cemented and forms a membrane like structure. This is nothing but hyaline membrane. Hence now the patient cannot breathe and becomes cyanotic. You would have come across the similar terms such as HMD, ARDS or RDS which ultimately leads to respiratory failure. All of these may have different etiology but similar pathogenesis. Now let's understand the radiological aspect of this disease. As you can see a picture of respiratory tract and alveoli, you will notice that lungs can be divided into respiratory tract alveoli and interstitium. As we have discussed earlier that HMD involves not only alveoli but also the surrounding interstitium. Hence you can see a greyish hyaline membrane in it. But it is important to note that respiratory tract that is from bronchi to the terminal duct is still patent and functional therefore they contains air. Now as we know that in an x-ray the air appears black, so is the normal lung which has mostly air and hence appears in the shades of grey to black. But here the respiratory tract or the ducts only has air and therefore look black and alveoli and the surrounded interstitium has hyaline membrane therefore they appear white. Hence a band of black is seen between the white areas called as air bronchogram sign which is peculiar when the alveoli is getting consolidated. You can see this here on an x-ray film the arrows showing the air bronchogram sign. Coming to the other radiological signs in HMD they are white out lung, ground glass appearance, reticulonodular appearance, low volume lung. Now let's see the treatment of HMD. The treatment begins with preventing the collapsing of the alveoli and opening the already closed alveoli. This is done by giving the positive air pressure. As can be seen here, by giving a positive pressure to the alveoli, it can be reopened. This positive pressure is provided by a device named as CPAP. This device continuously provide positive pressure which helps in keeping the alveoli patent. But an important thing to be considered here is that since many alveoli are already hyalinized and the overall lung volume is decreased, hence here we cannot give volume of air equal to the normal tidal volume as it may lead to excess volume diverted towards unhyalinized alveoli leading to their rupture. Therefore, CPAP is set on high pressure and low volume. 
Now let's go further and see the treatment of choice. As we have noticed that surfactant is being less produced here, therefore we give this surfactant using Inshort technique. Inshort stands for intubate, surfactant and extubate. In this technique, we use double tubes to intubate and then administer surfactant and then extubate. But why we use double tubes? This is because the surfactant is a jelly-like substance which may plug the ET tube and hence prevent oxygen transport. Therefore, to ensure a regular oxygen supply while surfactant administration, we use double tubes. Surfactant is given in two doses, 12 to 24 hours apart. The procedure may have pulmonary hemorrhage as a side effect. Now coming to the ventilation therapy. Ventilation is initially given by SIMV which stands Synchronized Intermittent Mechanical Ventilation. As can be represented by this picture, this technique gives oxygen intermittently through ET tube in a synchronized manner, which means it supplies whenever the newborn isn't able to take complete breaths. It is a kind of support to already running spontaneous respiration. But if newborn fails to breathe, then we have to switch to completely automated supply of oxygen at regular intervals in high frequency. This is done by High Frequency Oscillatory Ventilator HFOV in short. Now coming to last mode for treatment that is to bypass the action of lungs using heart and lung machine. This method keeps the blood oxygenated just like lungs do but the oxygenation takes place outside the body. Hence the name Extracorporeal Membrane Oxygenation or ECMO in short. Now let us see how to prevent this disease. The prophylaxis. It has been noticed that the cortisol or the steroids helps in generation of surfactant. Hence any preterm being delivered before 34 weeks the mother must be given steroid therapy. We can use either dexamethasone or betamethasone. Remembering the dose schedule is easy. Dexa has D that is fourth letter therefore four doses. Since we know that the total dose should be 24 milligram in two days time. Hence if four doses has to be given then six milligram over 12 hours interval should be given. Similarly, in case of beta methasone, beta has B. B is the second letter. Therefore, two doses required. Two dose for covering 24 mg in two days. Finding patterns make the study easy and we will together find such patterns to build our concepts. Now coming to the risk factors. The risk factors of HMDR Prematurity that is before date babies, birth asphyxia, multiple pregnancies, coexisting diaphragmatic hernia, infant of diabetic mother, and the C section, which is the minor risk factor. Now let's look on the another topic that is transient tachypnea of newborn or TTP. Transient tachypnea of newborn caused due to delayed absorption of intraalveolar fluid by the pulmonary lymphatics. The risk factors include caesarean section, infant of diabetic mother, precipitate labor, large for gestation age and macrosomic baby. Most important among being caesarean section. As C-section involves no stress to the baby unlike the vaginal birth in which the baby undergoes so much of stress that the respiratory system is cleared off. Hence in caesarean section no such stress is being delivered to the baby and hence the baby may develop TTP. Now coming to the clinical features, the most common clinical feature being increase in respiratory rate which is much more common than respiratory distress. Now coming to the investigation. The investigation of choice is chest x-ray which shows prominent horizontal interlobar fissure. 
as we have discussed earlier the air appears black and the fluid appears white on x-ray hence a black and white differentiating column of air fluid can be seen now coming to the treatment the treatment is mainly conservative that is more than 99% recovers spontaneously now let's come to the topic of meconium aspiration syndrome the meconium aspiration syndrome pathophysiology as you can see under stress a fetus may release meconium in utero this meconium can be aspirated by the fetus now two situation may arise if the meconium is thick then it can obstruct the respiratory tract hence causing obstructive emphysema or if the meconium is thin it may reach the alveoli and cause chemical pneumonitis both the above mentioned can cause respiratory distress now coming to chest x-ray it shows non specific signs now let's see the management the management mainly includes conservative treatment which may range from just iv fluids to mechanical ventilation we have already discussed the management of meconium stained lacquer in neonates in neonatal resuscitation you can find the link of this topic below in the description